this video, we'll be discussing convolutional neural networks. A convolutional neural network, also known as a CNN or ConvNet, is an artificial neural network that has so far been most popularly used for analyzing images. Although image analysis has been the most widespread use of CNNs, they can also be used for other data analysis or classification problems as well. Most generally, we can think of a CNN as an artificial neural network that has some type of specialization for being able to pick out or detect patterns and make sense of them. This pattern detection is what makes CNNs so useful for image analysis. So if a CNN is just some form of an artificial neural network, what differentiates it from just a standard multilayer perceptron or MLP? Well, a CNN has hidden layers called convolutional layers, and these layers are precisely what makes a CNN well, a CNN. Now, CNNs can and usually do have other non-convolutional layers as well, but the basis of a CNN is the convolutional layers. All right, so what do these convolutional layers do? Just like any other layer, a convolutional layer receives input, then transforms the input in some way, and then outputs the transformed input to the next layer. With a convolutional layer, this transformation is a convolution operation. We'll come back to this operation in a bit. For now, let's look at a high-level idea of what convolutional layers are doing. As mentioned earlier, convolutional neural networks are able to detect patterns in images. More precisely, the convolutional layers are able to detect patterns. Well, actually, let's be a little more precise than that. With each convolutional layer, we need to specify the number of filters the layer should have, and we'll speak technically about what a filter is in just a few moments. But for now, understand that these filters are actually what detect the patterns. Now when I say that the filters are able to detect patterns, what precisely do I mean by patterns? Well, think about how much may be going on in any single image. Multiple edges, shapes, textures, objects, etc. So one type of quote pattern that a filter could detect could be edges in images. So this filter would be called an edge detector, for example. Some filters may detect corners, some may detect circles, others squares. Now, these simple and kind of geometric filters are what we'd see at the start of our network. The deeper our network goes, the more sophisticated these filters become. So in later layers, rather than edges and simple shapes, our filters may be able to detect specific objects like eyes, ears, hair or fur, feathers, scales, and beaks even. And in even deeper layers, the filters are able to detect even more sophisticated objects like full dogs, cats, lizards, and birds. To understand what's actually happening here with these convolutional layers and their respective filters, let's look at an example. So say we have a convolutional neural network that's accepting images of handwritten digits, like from the MNIST data set, and our network is classifying them into their respective categories of whether the image is of a 1, 2, 3, etc. Let's now assume that the first hidden layer in our model is a convolutional layer. As mentioned earlier, when adding a convolutional layer to a model, we also have to specify how many filters we want the layer to have. A filter can technically just be thought of as a relatively small matrix for which we decide the number of rows and number of columns that this matrix has. And the values within the matrix are initialized with random numbers. So for this first convolutional layer in this example of ours, we're going to specify that we want the layer to contain one filter of size 3 by 3. Now when this convolutional layer receives input, the filter will slide over each 3x3 three three set of pixels from the input itself until it's slid over every 3x3 three three block of pixels from the entire image. This sliding is actually referred to as convolving, so really we should say that the filter is going to convolve across each 3x3 three three block of pixels from the input. To actually illustrate this, I'm going to use an example that Jeremy Howard used in one of his lectures for Fast AI. His example really gave me a lot of insight behind what was going on within a convolutional layer, so I'd like to share that with you all too. I've also linked to his lecture in the description of this video. So here we have our matrix representation of an image of a 7 from the MNIST dataset. The values in this matrix are the individual pixels from the image. Alright, so this is our input, and this input will be passed to a convolutional layer. As just discussed, we've specified this layer to only have one filter, and this filter is going to convolve across each 3x3 three three block of pixels from the input. So here's our 3x3 three three filter of random numbers here. When the filter first lands on the first 3x3 three three block of pixels, the dot product of the filter itself with the 3x3 three three block of pixels from the input will be computed and stored. 
This will occur for each 3x3 three three set of pixels that the filter convolves. So look, we would just take the dot product of the filter here with this first 3x3 three three block, and then we'd store it over here. Now we slide to the next 3x3 three three block, take the dot product, and then store the value here. If we look at the formula for each of these cells, we can see that it is just indeed the dot product of the filter with each 3x3 three three section of pixels from the input. So here we have this first value is the dot product of this input with this filter. And then if I click on another random value over here, we can see that this value is the dot product of the filter with this input. So after this filter has convolved the entire input, we'll be left with a new representation of our input, which is going to be made up of the entire matrix of those stored dot products we got from the filter. This matrix of dot products is going to be the output of this layer and is represented here. This is what will then be passed to the next layer as input. And this same process that we just went through with the filter will happen to this new output with the next layer's filters. Now, this was just a very simple illustration, but as mentioned, we can think of these filters as pattern detectors. So we can't really observe any specific pattern that was picked out from our filter in the example we just looked at in Excel, but let's show our original image of the seven here. And now let's say we have four three by three filters for our convolutional layer. And these filters are filled with the values you see here. And these values can be represented visually as these filters where the minus ones correspond to black, ones correspond to white, and zeros correspond to gray. So if we convolved our original image of a seven with each of these four filters individually, this is what the output would look like for each filter. We can see that all four of these filters are detecting edges. In the output, the brightest pixels can be interpreted as what the filter has detected. So this first one we can see detects top horizontal edges of the seven, and that's indicated by the brightest pixels here. The second detects left vertical edges, again being displayed with the brightest pixels. The third detects bottom horizontal edges, and the fourth detects right vertical edges. Now these filters are really basic and just detect edges, these are filters we may see towards the start of our network. More complex filters would be located deeper in the network and would gradually be able to detect more sophisticated patterns like the ones shown here. We can see the shapes that the filters on the left detected from the images on the right. This one here detects circles, and this one at the bottom is detecting corners. And as we go even further into our layers, the filters are able to detect much more complex patterns, like these dog faces being interpreted in this filter, or even the bird legs detected in this one. All right, so now if you're interested in seeing how to work with CNNs in code, then check out the CNN and fine tuning videos in my Keras Deep Learning playlist. So I hope that you now have a basic understanding of convolutional neural networks and how these networks are made up of convolutional layers, which themselves are made up of filters. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. And thanks for watching.